This evening, I got a message from one of our producers who works with us on Maker Deck and now the uh, Locker Gnome reboot. Uh, we use StreamYard to bring people in uh, on the Locker Gnome live feed. This is currently happening live 24 7 at live.perillo.com, which redirects to the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash locker gnome slash live. So you can join anytime, day or night. People are geeking out, playing video games, doing things on the desktop and, and, and whatnot. Uh, but as I also mentioned, he also helps with Maker Deck, which is pretty much like this, although mostly just 3D printers, and that's specifically for makers over on Twitch. So he messages me out of the blue, and he asks me, uh, do you have an M1 or an M2? And I meant to type, initially, I meant to type M1, and it was a typo, and it's, I went M2, but it's, it's an M1. Uh, in fact, this is my second M1 device, Glendon, and Glendon is, is joining. He's currently playing Super Mario World, and his, his audio is up, so we'll be able to hear from him as well. The interesting thing about this question is that Glendon has never touched a Mac. So now, before I, I get into the decisions of why I've had now just two M1s, Glendon, what, what, what brought this about? Curiosity more than anything. Um, the fact that I do want a laptop, I need one, because I don't want to be tethered to my desktop at all times. I have an iPad, um, it's tried and true. And I've heard good things about Mac OS in general versus Windows. Um, so I was, curiosity's sake, was wondering if the M1 was still a viable option since the M2 is out now. Uh, so, first of all, uh, yeah, uh, I, I was also curious about Mac OS eons ago, several times over, uh, and ultimately made the meat. The meat. Uh, no, I'm vegan. I did not make the meat. I made the leap uh, to Mac OS after uh, Vista, and I've pretty much been primary Mac OS, though I also use Windows as well. Um, Windows 11 is definitely a step in the right direction for me as far as a cohesive UI is concerned. Mac OS, for the most part, has aged gracefully, though Apple's made some decisions that have been questionable uh, in, in that department, I would say, uh, kind of iOS, iOSifying, if I could use that as a term, the Mac mm -hmm. desktop, uh, but it hasn't been to, um, I guess, for, for my use cases, hasn't been annoying such that I want to stop using Mac OS. So there's usually a tipping point for me. Uh, and, and so when Apple has made their changes, honestly, I, I haven't seen a great many of them in the iterative changes that they've made with Mac OS over the years. I mean, it adds up, certainly, if you, you look at previous mm -hmm. generations. So Mac OS is different. You cannot treat it like Windows, nor can you treat Linux like it's Mac OS or, you know, Mac OS like it's Linux, right? They're all right. different. Uh, I ended up getting um, an M1, an, the, the first M1 MacBook Pro, I think it was the 13 inch MacBook Pro. This was a couple of years ago, knowing full well, it wasn't going to satisfy me because I was driving an external monitor uh, and I wanted to be able to drive two potentially uh, it did not have the power. Uh, moreover, I knew that, uh, I well, I did not know, but I was hoping that the uh, um, uh, the screen would become a ProMotion display eventually, and at that time they hadn't announced anything, but I needed an upgrade. I needed something, and it was more viable for me to go with a MacBook Pro 13-inch, knowing full well that I could sell it, or, or you know, back to Apple or to somebody else, and then get the one that I might have wanted when it was released. So that's pretty much what happened. My uh, The M1... Um, the Max, Pro Max, is that what? It, I've lost track of which one it is. It's a 16-inch one with the notch, right. and I think it's the Max. Yes, uh, and, I think and that's I, the moniker. Yeah, uh, I went that direction because you know I, 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 I'd future-proof it, right? And, and it would give right. me the thing that I needed, uh, not the least of which is the high refresh uh, display, wider or a larger screen real estate, or a bigger screen real estate. A uh, higher resolution, faster, certainly, especially when it comes to any kind of video crunching that I might do on the desktop or audio crunching, which I do frequently enough. So uh, I knew I could justify getting something as a holdover, the, the smaller MacBook, the lesser powered MacBook, uh, and I ended up selling that one to my brother because uh, he was looking for an upgrade. He had, I couldn't even tell you how old his Mac was, but it was ready to go. I said, well, just wait. 
and then basically I would sell this one at a pretty steep discount. I basically gave him Apple's rate, uh, like mm -hmm. uh, what they would take, what they what they would have taken for it anyway. I gave it to him for that. So he got my first M1. This is my second M1. It is still no slouch, uh, and I don't know if I could, in good conscience, see a upgrade path for me from an M1 Mac to an M2. Not just because of the revisions, but, and yeah, there, there there's obviously speed differences, minus, I guess, SSD speed on the M2, or at least some of the M2 MacBooks, has been uh, uh, benchmarked as slower, which could have been related to um, supply chain issues. No surprises there. Uh, so that would be a sacrifice. Uh, it would be a, it would be almost a a lateral upgrade moving generation to generation because there's nothing that the M2 has to offer me that I'm feeling the pinch with now. So I would have no qualms in continuing to recommend at least the MacBook that I've been using since they released it, the M1 Max. And I, I can't even I don't even know the specs. Honestly, I don't. This is this is how much I, I care about specs or think about the specs. 32 gigs of RAM. Uh, yeah, M1 Max. Yeah, that's what it is. 32 gigs of RAM. I, I always go with the terabyte hard drive, though, because, you know, especially right. when you work with video. Um, it's ample. I'm able to power everything that I have connected, including this USB microphone, including the iPhone connected using continuity camera to Mac OS, including this live stream, including the recording of OBS and the screencast, including this external monitor, uh, including the uh, 2.5 gigabit Ethernet connection, Powering everything. This this MacBook is powering everything. And let me open up Activity Monitor. It's doing all that. I'm just getting an idea. So sure. right now, the CPU load is 13%. Uh, user load is 16%. Idle 70%. So it it it's doing all that. It's doing everything I might want to be doing in an extreme end. A USB mic, a USB this, a USB that, a Mac, you know, screen. It's doing all that. It's doing it efficiently. So if I did anything with um with with or if, 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 with with my system that i felt like i'm hitting a wall that's when i'd start looking at an upgrade path i believed right. though when i bought this the m1 max or the macbook pro 16 inch with a notch i knew full well that i was getting it and not likely upgrading until there was an m3 or an m4 and by then like three gener two three generations removed then it would start feeling not its age, but I'm like, all right, I'm, I'm ready for a bump. I'm ready for things to improve ever so slightly. Uh, single core performance uh, being uh, one of my my biggest drivers of, of, of measurement uh, because most of what I might do is, is single core. Um, but yeah, that, that that's really the, uh, the, the, the short answer to whether or not I believe that the, uh, the M1 is still a, a, a good processor to buy into, even with the M2 being released. There are iterative changes, but... I would, I'd still have no qualms even recommending the first M1 MacBook that I had. It was no slouch. It just depends on what you want. Did you have the MacBook Air, the first one? No, uh, I. But see, or did you have the, just the regular Pro before the? the Mac I had the Pro. Okay. I don't think I've ever owned a, a MacBook Air. Uh, to my knowledge, I don't think I've ever had one. Okay. Um, so yeah, no. Uh, I have. Uh, and by the way, Google Chrome is running uh, right now. The the. OBS that's doing the recording, the screencasting, that's what's taking up about 7 8% at 30 frames per second uh, and streaming live and doing all that. I'm just, not that you needed a breakdown of where the system, you know, was being pegged, but right. I, there's no lag. Like, I'm not, you know, feeling like, oh, I'm getting crunched. So it is it is more than capable to handle work-a-day tasks. Uh, and, and so if you're looking at just portability over everything else, I, despite not having experience with a MacBook Air... If you're looking for portability and Mac OS and speed um, and you're not going to be doing a lot of video editing uh, or, or you don't expect to be playing a lot of games, which, you know, people usually don't buy Macs to, buy, to, to play games. I mean, I, I, I use right. Apple Arcade for $5 a month and it's I'm sure the, the MacBook Air would handle it. I, I'd have no problem recommending a MacBook Air personally. Right. No, I would use it primarily just for... Um... I would say content intake. Um, oh yeah, then you're emails, fine. Docs, you're fine. Yeah, you're fine. Like that. Yeah, you're fine. Um, because I do have a 16 core desktop PC. Right. Um, 
that is more than ample for gaming and any video editing that I want to do. Um, so I would be looking just for, you know, just a quality of life kind of upgrade, you know, as being able to untether. Yeah. Uh, I think, you know, make sure you know what you're jumping into because it is not a PC. Right. Um, you know, if you're, if, if you're worried about attachments or dongles, right. You know, if you need, you have special needs, the air may not have what you're looking for, but like I said, I'm at home here and mm -hmm. I've never really taken it on the go. I've never needed to. It is my main system. I don't have a desktop Mac anymore. I have the PC, the Nook PC that powers the, the, the stream when I do it on Twitch usually, but right. everything is running on a single Thunderbolt cable connected to a hub. Uh, and that powers it, keeps it charged, etc. I do take it sometimes into the other room if I need to do something uh, away from the, this desk. But uh, an air would would handle it. I, I, I all that very very well. Um, the caveat I, I think would be the if you ever thought you needed to plug something into it, right. which you could use uh, again. You could use that at home uh, if you needed to. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I have no issue. I, I I didn't have an issue when the M1 was released. I didn't think it was a. a I thought it, and when I used it, I was like, "This is zippy. It, it's it's fast. It is zippy is the better word to use instead of fast. It's zippy." And and so the M2 Max is is equally as zippy. I and honestly, I will say, I don't know if I felt that much of a speed difference in usability between the first M1 that I used and the M1 Max. Now I know on paper mm -hmm. it's oh well it's faster this way. And that I'm not sure I saw. I, I'm not sure I felt that difference as much as maybe others did because it was same same generation right it's maybe faster more cores and what have you but for day-to-day -day stuff it, you know i, I honestly I, I cannot remember seeing such a tremendous leap and you know apart from like you've got smartphones generation over generation you know you gotta you gotta upgrade you want to upgrade your screen you want it to be a st stronger screen you want a better camera you don't find those needs necessarily in in laptop uh systems so yeah to answer your question i think an m1 MacBook Air for you as a Mac OS noob would be uh, more than ample. Okay, that's what I thought. I didn't think that I would need the the Pro. I thought that it was overkill for what for what my I think it were. would be. Given that you're saying email, like checking the web, maybe, you know, some surfing and and, and watching video, you're you're going to be fine. There you're you can always look and say, "Ooh, maybe I'll use that. Ooh, maybe I'll use this." But in practical day-to-day -day application, most people will never, you know, have those extremes. Right. In, in, in your in your scenario specifically 